And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Sunday, August 7th, 2022. First, my apologies for the late uh, posting of this update. I had all the right intentions and actually had started out much earlier to do an uh, Eye of the Storm podcast, which would have gone into much greater depth in terms of the big picture, how it blends out, how I'm currently viewing the markets and trading them, et cetera, et cetera. It's really bringing a lot of things into focus. And I was all set to do that. And I had a couple of emergencies, one being a, uh, a health emergency that I needed to attend to. And so I apologize for that. But nonetheless, let's dive into an Elliott Wave update. And then as promised, I will attempt to get done uh, this week, that larger update. Uh, and do it as a podcast. Okay, starting with the S&P here on the weekly chart, I wanted to show how, yep, I am now definitively got them side by side and uh, labeling via degree. So within view number one, I'm calling it, I believe that we're still within this intermediate C-wave decline. I have completed at that 11,068 low, the minor wave one. And that we have been in a minor wave two counter trend rally, which may be complete at Friday's Globex high. And if that's the case, it completed a minor wave two. That's under view number one. View number two does go on the premise that the intermediate C wave decline is complete. So first of all, instead of a minor wave one, it would be a minor wave five, an intermediate wave C, and a primary wave A completion point at uh, 3639, which was the mid-June low. Now, having said that, that would put that the market on a primary degree is now involved in tracing out a primary B wave. Within a primary B wave, there are three and ABC of intermediate degree. And so what we've been counting out would be an intermediate degree A wave. And what we'd be completing here would be the minor C wave. So these would not be minute. They would be minor. So it'd be minor A, B, and C to complete intermediate wave A. So what then would be coming under view number two would be a intermediate B wave counter trend decline or rally or yeah, counter trend move because it actually be counter trend to the trend of what it is within that intermediate or primary A wave. Primary B wave, excuse me. Whew, I'll get it together. So now, Back to the count that I am working as that's the one that is showing. I will be running them together. But now I'm going to be discussing if this high, and I'm going to drop down to the daily so we can see it a little bit more clean. On Friday into a Thursday into Friday, that Globex session, the S&P topped at 4,175.50. And from there, looks like we started to decline because what really kicked it off during Friday was the employment situation number. Market decided that that was inflationary and then rightfully so. A lot of people got put back to work, which is positive for the government's um, agenda, but and for people getting back to work so that they're contributing to the tax base and also just having the ability to earn money and have a life. Um, but in essence, what it actually is, is inflationary. So it's a double-edged sword in our current situation where we basically still have very strong running inflation. And so therefore interest rates which should continue to rise. So it truly is a double-edged sword because it is good news that people are going back to work and they will have uh, the ability to earn income and et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, it should produce maybe a little bit more of the unwanted 
uh, picture in terms of it'll still show that inflation is in still in place. There will be wage uh, pressure as people who are working need to make more money. There are also, we have the counter of all these people going back to work is that we have already received notices from the likes of Apple and Amazon and Google and Facebook and Microsoft, et cetera, et cetera, going down the line of that they are cutting back on their hiring plans for the balance of 2022, and they are beginning to lay off people. So one hand, we added a bunch of jobs. The other hand, we're going to be adding to those pay on unemployment payrolls. So that'll balance out all on its own. We need to deal with what's trading right in front of us. So again, as I present all of this, I am not being wishy-washy. I am not talking about, well, I can't make up my mind. I most certainly can. And I do trade the moves. So no, I'm not hanging out going like, well, I don't know if it's really bullish or bearish. A, I do not take a bullish or bearish posture or bias. And let me tell you, that takes practice not doing because that's how we're taught. You want to jump into the market, you're either bullish or bearish. You want to invest, you're either bullish or bearish. And as a retail investor, most often you can't be bearish, you can only be bullish. You can only buy and you buy and you hold. Now, having said all that, I don't prefer not to do that. Why? Because primarily the markets are now quantitatively traded. What does that really suggest? They are really under the guise of algorithms which are firing 24 seven and every market gets them. And we still have to deal with what an algorithm is coming in to do for whatever reason it's doing it. As was said by JP Morgan's head quant guy that even in the future next quarter, we might still get negative earnings, but it'll be bullish. Higher interest rates, it'll be bullish. And you know what that tells you? You can program an algorithm to do what, exactly what you want it to do. If you want it to take bad news and put it into positive bullish moves, you can do that. And guess what? You're big enough and you can do it and you can push the bank's money into it. You'll get everybody to follow suit. Why? Because all of the algorithms have to come along and get in line. Now, that's not saying anything bullish or bearish about anything. That's just saying, follow the bouncing ball, follow the big money, follow whatever you're choosing, but follow the price action. I don't have to be bullish to understand, jump on this train and make the money. And if you're a position trader or even a swing trader, you can follow it by just the Elliot of what, what's being said in Elliot. We're in a C wave going up. It comes in five waves. You can track it. You can trade it. You can follow it. Therefore, you don't have to come back and comment to me about, well, I, don't, I can't make up my mind, so what good are you? I will tell you, I am laying out the probable path that the market may be taking. And I'm giving you both an upside and a downside. Now, for me, I'm a day trader. So I'm going to walk in each day with a clean slate, and I'm just going to trade the price action and trade the moves and make my money and say thank you and be done. If you think I'm sitting with a negative position in an up market, mm -mm, I'm not. I'm not. And so this is why I'm presenting it the way I do. Because we need to know what's the big picture telling us. What is the potential? If your belief is that this was the end of primary wave A, and we got a lot more to go, then you've been long. But now I'm raising the flag to say, we may have a downturn. It won't go to new, new lows below what we've already seen at 36, 39, but we may go down far enough that you might want to adjust your position or whatever. That's up to each one of us. Now, back to what I'm talking about. On the daily chart, I am marking that high, that, that Globex high on Friday as the completion point for the fifth wave of wave C 
And on this particular count, that would complete minor wave two. If I flip out and go over to the other count, view number two, it's still an ABC, but these would be on minor degree. And this four all the way up to five would be minor wave C to complete intermediate wave A. So either way, whether it's a minor wave three or an intermediate wave B, I believe we're headed we're heading for a downturn in the market. Now, the difference between the two views is that view number one, that if it is a minor third wave, one of the requirements or one of the things that I definitively would look for is a break below 36.39. And I would suspect that the market will kick off a minor third wave by getting itself below 4,100, below 4,000, and down here to where the 50s, we have the 50 EMA sitting at 30, basically at 4,000. And then we have the 50 SMA sitting at 39.50. And I think that would be a good start to the move down and give confirmation that it more than likely is a minor third wave versus an intermediate B wave. So, Intermediate B wave should start with a minor A wave down. And that could come in the shape of five, five waves, or it in and of itself could be a three-wave structure down. We're going to tag and follow both to see which it is. It should not take a whole long time for the market to let us know which, which count is going to follow through. So until then, we run them together. Okay, so... What can I look for for tomorrow? Again, I'm leaving open the potential for one more run higher. And that would suggest that the market will get up towards 4,200 and up towards the daily 200 EM, excuse me, EMA. And that then may complete wave five. And I certainly, I'm not looking for too much more extension out of this wave. Um, again, we have enough hot spots. We have, I do believe that the, the package that's being passed by the Congress is mid to longer term, very bullish to me, as far as being a consumer, as far as being a retail trader, as far as being a someone that knows that there's a lot of people out of work. It gives the opportunity to number one, repair a lot of our infrastructure that is in desperate need to get us ready for the balance of the 21st century. So that's important. It also brings about a lot of different changes that can be put into place to start battling climate change. So there's a lot of positive things within this entire package. The negative side of that package that could affect the market is that, like I said, we have all of these big corporations that are gonna now be taxed because up to $300 billion to pay for this infrastructure package and all of these different uh, portions of it will be coming from increased taxation on the corporate level. And so that's gonna suggest and mean that eventually these numbers that are being shown will not be as high because they got to pay taxes on them. How is that going to filter through? Yet to be seen. Okay, so, but in the meantime, in the meantime, leave open the potential that we could take a little bit of a hike and go back up. Let me drop down here to the four-hour chart. Four-hour four chart still leaves that open as well. In fact, um hold on i'm gonna back up back to that daily and let's run actually if we're saying that that is the a the c and we're looking at the a the a wave we got to run it out there but i'm not going to go there i will go up to this level though oops come on there to um, where's that oh 
Well, wait, wait, come on. I got it. 37. It's going to be a little bit, a little bit off. So right now we still have 4252. We have 4218, 4252, 618. Minor wave two could definitely come up to 618. So we still have upside potential. We have the SMA and the uh, another FIB resistance at 4339. Those remain in the picture. I don't necessarily think that we're going to see those upper levels. We may. Let me just blow it all off because the algorithms will drive it up there. So that has to remain open. I am labeling them as complete because of my count. I can count it as complete. But again, I am leaving open the possibility and the potential. So if we see this all hold and we run, because right now on the daily, it's holding the four. Four on the daily. On the four hour, it's clustered right here. At the 20, the four, and the eight. Cluster, just hold it waiting for more input, more markets, more traders to come in and decide for us. Okay, so if it starts to come off, I again, like I said, let's look at the four hour chart. For our 20, which is at 41.33, then we've got the 50s grouped together. That's the SMA and the EMA. At 4093, they're basically just hugging each other right there. Then we start to pick up some uh, FIB support at 4017. And then we've got the four hour uh, 200 EMA at 3983, the SMA at 3920. That's where I'm going to leave it. Our next update will be on Monday, Joe, uh, August the 8th.